welcome to lecture 2. So, in continuation with the uh, our introductory lecture, uh, I would like to add some of the subtopics in ergonomics. So, uh, in that physical ergonomics, uh, we will uh, be covering some of the subtopics like in physiology, musculoskeletal system, in metabolism and digestive systems, cardiovascular systems, respiratory systems and in anthropometry, we will be discussing about design principles, collection of data and statistical tools and as well as biomechanics. We will be discussing basics to biomechanics also. And in the cognitive ergonomics part, we will be discussing about the human sensory system in which we will be discussing about vision, hearing, tactile sense, olfactory sense and taste. So, these are the basic five uh, human senses through which we perceive the information and uh, decides our course of action. And again uh, uh, in the next phase we will be discussing about perception, uh, in that detection and recognition will be discussed. And in continuation with the, this cognitive ergonomics, uh, we will be discussing uh, attention resources. So, attention resources may be splitting uh, into selective, uh, focused, divided, sustained and uh, as far as uh, uh, memory is concerned. So, sensory memory, working memory, long term memory that we will be discussing in the forthcoming lectures and uh, response selection and execution that we will also discuss. Some of the cognitive uh, tasks, uh, those tasks are decision making, planning and problem solving as well as some of the design guidelines while considering the cognitive factors. Apart from this physical and cognitive ergonomics, we will be discussing about the research methodologies that has been used uh, uh, while uh, performing research in ergonomics. So, some sort of experimental techniques, analytical tools and numerical methods and uh, some of the softwares that are available uh, for the analysis of ergonomics. So, those things we will also be discussing in uh, next lectures. So, now uh, coming back to the uh, our discussion uh, about uh, uh, the various aspects of ergonomics and possible application areas. So, there are basically two areas uh, where the ergonomic uh, research is focused. The first is work system design and second is product design. So, in that work system design, our objective is to take care of the safety, accident, uh, we have to uh, take care of the factors in order to avoid any accident and we have to also take care of uh, uh, improved uh, functional performance and uh, uh, those uh, in order to enhance the performance, uh, we also have to include environment such as lightning and uh, other factors also. So, in the work system design, uh, it is mainly concerned uh, with the interaction between worker and equipment used in the workplace. So, uh, the work system design includes the consideration of factors related to the work environment. And uh, another area application area of uh, ergonomics is product design. So, in that uh, this particular area uh, deals with the design of a particular product and uh, uh, that should be focused uh, for its safety and more comfortability and more user friendly and uh, obviously. Uh, uh, without have having any mistake and errors. So, in addition to uh, providing a greater customer satisfaction uh, by means of adding these kinds of features, an issue in product design is uh, product uh, liability lawsuits and their avoidance through consideration of ergonomics. So, uh, in a nutshell, these are the possible application area uh, like work system design and product design. So, in these two domains, you can uh, split uh, all the possible uh, scope of research uh, in uh, these two categories. So, now uh, the uh, next question that often comes in our mind while tackling this applied ergonomics course that uh, what exactly this ergonomist do? So, uh, the answer is the ergonomist uh, perform research on uh, human capabilities and its limitations. Second is it also uh, as a design, design engineer, it also design and uh, make the product uh, relevant to the engineering applications. 
So, uh, what exactly it does? It discovers the characteristic of human performance, uh, like uh, how much can an average worker lift, something uh, and uh, other factors also. And while designing, uh, that ergonomist use the research findings to design better tools and work methods. So, basically, the emphasis on uh, some of the factors while uh, uh, dealing with this ergonomic. Uh, those uh, factors are which we consider uh, while tackling this uh, uh, ergonomic uh, thing is safety, safety of anything, comfort, interaction between human and equipment, workplace environment, fitting the work to the individual, reduction of human errors and accident avoidance. So, in that context we have to uh, decide the role of an ergonomist and related uh, we have to take care of the related performance. So, overall objective of this uh, uh, but, uh, of a particular ergonomist is to provide the greater ease of interaction uh, between the user and equipment and uh, it also take care of uh, uh, that uh, of it also takes care of the fact that uh, human uh, any kind of error whether it will be uh, based on uh, human interventions or uh, it, it, it would be of machine error. So, we have to as an ergonomist uh, he has to take care of those errors also. And as far as uh, uh, it should avoid user difficulty and uh, it also has to take care of uh, comfortability of a user. So, now there are uh, uh, while an in any industry there are two uh, prospects that used to come first is the uh, fitting the person to the job and second is fitting the job to the person. So, first we will discuss the fitting the person to the job. So, uh, uh, the, this is a common uh, employment practice uh, in fact, prior to the ergonomics uh, was based on a philosophy that is known as fitting the person to the job. So, which recommended that workers be selected on the basis of his mental aptitude and physical characteristics for a particular job requirement. So, in that context uh, uh, the organization used to conduct psychometric test uh, that test for intelligence and uh, personality characteristics and uh, in fact, uh, our workers physical attributes were also used in the selection process for job requiring characteristics such as size and its in strength. So, FPJ uh, that is fitting the person to the job is uh, still uh, considered among the eligibility factors for certain positions uh, in many hiring situations today itself. So, uh, this uh, is not an uh, uh, ergonomic approach. So, here uh, this is a common philosophy prior to the ergonomics and uh, FPJ is still important and uh, as an example we can take that. Uh, as an any uh, position which is opened in an educational uh, institute. So, the educational requirement for technical position is usually filled up uh, based on this philosophy. The another kind of philosophy is uh, fitting the job to the person. So, uh, the philosophy in ergonomics is uh, like uh, designing the job, so that uh, nearly any member of the workforce can perform it. There are several factors that explain why the new philosophy has evolved and now occupies a first position that operates in parallel with then sometimes supersedes the FPJ approach. First is changes in the worker still requirement, the second is demographic changes and third is social and political changes. So, in fact, in Europe the ergonomic started seriously uh, with industrial applications in 1950s and used information uh, from uh, work physiology, biomechanics and anthropometry for the design of workstation and industrial processes. So, after discussing these two philosophy that uh, FPJ and FJP, now we will understand uh, uh, one ergonomic system uh, and uh, its component. So, an ergonomic system is composed of uh, interaction between uh, in fact, interaction among human machine and environment. 
So, that work system consists of uh, human, machine and environment. So, uh, in that uh, we perform work and uh, so, uh, based on the combination of these three entities, the six directional interactions are possible. So, among uh, these three entities, uh, human to machine uh, that interaction may be possible, machine to environment that is possible, machine to human, machine uh, to environment we have discussed, uh, environment to machine and environment to human. So, in this way out of these six types of interaction, uh, four of these involve the person. So, we will now try to understand this particular interaction and the evaluation of the concepts. So, now uh, since these three uh, ergonomic system, so now uh, we will try to understand uh, this kind of interaction in a work system and it is uh, and based on the interaction what could be the possible uh, topics that has been uh, immersed out for the understanding of uh, complete understanding of the ergonomic system. So, now uh, here you can see that uh, this is the table that has been divided into uh, two column. The first column is having the interaction and second is the evaluation of the concept. So, uh, each of the component of a particular work system may interact either directly or indirectly with the others. So, as an example a machine may change the state of the environment by emitting a noise or heat for example and uh, this also affect the user. So, if we take uh, uh, here in this table the first kind of interaction is the effect of human on machine. So, H is denoting the human and M is for machine and E is for uh, environment here. So, in that table wherever you are finding H you uh, uh, pronounce it as a human and uh, as, uh, as for M is concerned it is machine and E is for environment. So, now uh, you just uh, visualize this table and uh, so the first uh, uh, interaction is effects of human on the machine. So, uh, human may apply large forces to the machine which may cause damage to a certain part of the body. In, oppos uh, in opposite to that we may also think of the situation when human can also fine tune the control over the machine. So, uh, the effect may be evaluated. So, the effect may be evaluated on the basis of uh, body posture and uh, movement while handling machine and amount of forces applied by human or how much muscle muscular fatigue human has faced. So, if uh, the interaction uh, between human and machine is taking place, so what could be the possibility of interaction, uh, how could they interact with each other. So, there is a possibility of large force application, fine tuning of controls, stocking raw material, maintenance etcetera. So, the evaluation will be like uh, how we will evaluate uh, uh, those things in a, in a bit technical way. So, that ergonomic uh, study could be carried out. So, first kind of study uh, that can be done uh, based on the human machine interaction is anatomical. So, anat anatomical interaction uh, or anatomical uh, evaluation we can take, uh, take place that can take place. Uh, so, in that body and limb posture and movement size of the forces cycle time, frequency of the movement and muscular fatigue. So, these kind of analysis we can do uh, while taking care of the anatomical study. Another kind of thing that we can uh, 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 we can do uh, as an study part is physiological study. So, in that whatever the human is performing uh, in terms of physical effort we can calculate the work rate. Uh, that work rate can be uh, defined in terms of oxygen consumption and heart rate and uh, we can also evaluate the fitness of the workforce and uh, we can also for uh, if a particular person is uh, uh, working for a prolonged period of time. So, physiological fatigue uh, can also be evaluated. There are uh, other than anatomical and physiological uh, concepts that is psychological. So, psychologically uh, we have to also take care of the uh, matters. So, skill requirement, mental workload, parallel and sequential processing of information and compatibility of action modalities. 
So, these are the psychological part which uh, can be evaluated, evaluated while uh, the interaction uh, of the human and machine is taking place. So, another kind of interaction is human uh, the in fact, human to the environment. So, that uh, that is uh, that is effects of uh, human on the local environment. So, that environment may be composed of uh, the noise visual light uh, in which the particular human is uh, performing work, the amount of gases present in the ambient and uh, as well as noise that we have uh, uh, told. So, in that uh, interaction between the human and uh, environment, in fact, the effect of the human on the local environment. So, the things that has come out uh, as a physical evaluation. So, objective measurement of a working environment, implications for compliance with the standards. So, those things we uh, that can be uh, immersed out from the effects of the human on the local environment. The third kind of interaction is uh, the machine over uh, human. So, in that interaction the feedback and display of information is to, uh, can be carried out. The machine surfaces may be excessively hot or cold and a threat to the health of the machine. So, another kind of interaction is uh, effect of the machine uh, effect of the machine uh, on the uh, so on the on the human. So, feedback and display of the information is uh, uh, is the kind of interaction between uh, these two entities and uh, machine surfaces may be excessively hot uh, or cold uh, and threat to the health of a human. So, because uh, re repetitive work and continuous work on the machine may as uh, may deteriorate the part of the machine also and, uh, uh, and as far as wear and tear of the machine part uh, goes. So, it can also in the in the longer period of time it may also threat to the health of a human. So, in that design of control and tools is uh, is the uh, study of interest and objective measurement of vibrations, reaction forces of powdered machines, noise and surface temperature in the work uh, space. And uh, as far as physiological part is concerned, it does the sensory feedback exceed uh, physiological threshold. So, uh, as well as psychologically application of grouping principles to design of face plates, panel and graphic displays, information load compatibility with user expectation. So, another kind of interaction is machine uh, to the environment. So, machine may alter working environment by emitting noise, heat and noxious gas also. So, it is evaluation is like mainly by industrial site engineers, industrial hygienist and uh, another kind of interaction is environment uh, to the human. The environment in turn may influence the human ability to interact with the machine or to remain part of the work system. So, in an environment if temperature is exceeding certain limit, so human can also not uh, survive up to uh, beyond a certain limit. So, that also we will discuss in the thermo regulation part in the physical ergonomics uh, uh, when we are going to discuss about physical ergonomics. So, uh, as far as there is a certain uh, decibel label through which uh, uh, to which human ear can sustain. So, that uh, limit we, we, we will also discuss and uh, noise lighting and temperature survey of the entire facilities. So, uh, another kind of interaction is environmental uh, to the machine. So, environment may affect the functioning of the machine, uh, it may cause overheating or freezing of components. So, as an example many machines require oxygen to operate. Oxygen is usually regarded as unlimited and freely available rather than part of the fuel. So, uh, these are all about the interactions and uh, we will slowly uh, uh, go into the detail of uh, each and every uh, uh, interaction whether it be human to machine uh, or it be a effect of machine to the human or uh, uh, to the environment also as well. So, uh, now uh, we will discuss about the uh, further about the human machine system. So, in that uh, we will also uh, uh, discuss about the type of human machine systems. So, uh, the basic uh, model in ergonomics. So, the human machine system is the basic model in ergonomics in which uh, the human machine system defined as the combination of human and equipment 
interacting to uh, achieve some desired result. So, number of human can range from uh, one to many and the types uh, as well and amount of equipment uh, can range from uh, single handed tool to complex and sophisticated equipments so, or a sophisticated uh, collection of machines. So, as an example we can take any, uh, uh, any product manufacturing in which uh, the human is the operator and uh, the, he is handling uh, uh, from easier to uh, complex uh, equipments. So, uh, basically uh, it is defined that human machine systems are defined as a combination of human and equipment interacting to achieve some desired result. So, there are basically uh, three types of human machine systems, first is manual systems, second is mechanical system and uh, third is automated system. So, in that, uh, in that context we can uh, uh, elaborate in a, in a bit detail like manual system. Uh, so, that system involves a person using some hand tools or other non powered uh, implement to uh, perform an uh, activity. So, as an example we can take uh, a farmer uh, work who is using a pitchfork to load uh, hay into a wagon. As far as mechanical system is concerned. So, that system refers to uh, one or more uh, uh, humans using powered uh, equipment to accomplish uh, some job. So, that typical case is that uh, equipment uh, provides the mechanical power to the job and uh, as an example we can take uh, the uh, when a farmer is driving a tractor uh, to harvest a crop. As far as automated uh, system is concerned, so this system involves uh, the performance of a job with the minimum of human attention. So, the automated systems do require occasional human attention. So, if the uh, like that is itself uh, is a part of uh, now with the days automated system. Uh, so, most of the, uh, the, uh, the human uh, as far as uh, human discovery is concerned. So, uh, the research is going on to make each and everything uh, uh, bit automated. So, uh, you can find uh, uh, a lot of automated systems in your surrounding as well. So, uh, so a key features of a human machine system is, the, is that interaction occur between the human and machine which is depicted in now uh, this uh, slide. So, here uh, this figure is showing the block diagram of uh, block diagram model of the interaction in, in human machine system. So, uh, this particular uh, uh, human machine system that uh, you are seeing in this slide is having some boundary. So, that boundary which define that what components are included within the scope of this system for the purpose of analysis and design. So, as you can see from this figure that uh, that is uh, contain uh, uh, as a human and the machine. So, uh, since human performs actions to control machine operations for processing and it goes for display. So, there are some issues that need to resolve in order to optimize the different system interactions. Uh, issues. So, here uh, so uh, as you can see from this uh, like uh, uh, the action of the human to the control to the machine to the process and uh, that again it goes to the display and the sensing and then information processing. So, uh, as an ergonomist if you can uh, be participative in uh, or in uh, if you want to contribute in order to enhance the particular system. So, you have to take care of several design issues. So, that those design issues may be the location of displays, effects of lighting, noise, noise level, vibration level, effects on the perception and recognition that that is coming in the category of information processing and issue regarding regarding workspace envelope, skill levels, training, how much fatigue a person particular person in the, that particular system is facing and uh, as well as motivational factors also and uh, many other uh, factors. So, uh, in a nutshell 
uh, the, the issues regarding the workspace uh, that may contain uh, the training of workforce, fatigue uh, which a particular uh, person is having uh, while uh, continuous task uh, performance, so on and so forth. So, these issues uh, uh, is the, are the responsibility of an ergonomist to take care while interacting with the human machine system. Now, uh, uh, we will go in the detail uh, uh, about this human machine system. So, first we will take, uh, take the human component. So, as suggested by the model of human machine system in the previous figure. So, human components of interest are those that perform basically uh, three functions. The first is uh, sensing the operation second is information processing and third is actions. So, these three I have uh, uh, pointed out in the slide itself that human senses to sense the operation. So, human senses are basically uh, five, first is vision, hearing, touch, smell and taste. And as far as human brain is concerned which is responsible for human processing. So, in that uh, the all the cognitive tasks or the all the cognitive activities uh, that is included in this uh, information processing. So, uh, uh, thinking, planning, calculating, making decisions and solving problems. So, these are the uh, activities which has been performed by the human brain and uh, as far as uh, for information processing. Another thing uh, that is uh, in the human components is uh, human effectors. Uh, it is just to take action. So, these are nothing but your fingers, hand, feet and voice as well. So, that effector is a, uh, is a body part which is uh, having muscles or group of muscles that actuates in response to some stimulus. So, the principal human factors in this are uh, that I have mentioned uh, before like in the slide itself the fingers, hands, feet and voice. Basically, these human effectors are supported by musculoskeletal system of the body and the stimulus is provided by information processing uh, occurring in the human brain. Now, as far as uh, another thing is concerned that is uh, machine component. So, uh, uh, as uh, I have mentioned in the uh, previous sentences that machine uh, in the human machine system can range from simple hand tool to sophisticated equipments. So, the typical model in ergonomics is one in which the interaction between human and machines are directly coupled. So, there are following uh, common examples like uh, a person which is driving a car. So, the driver continuously steers the car using a steering wheel and control its speed using, uh, using the throttle paddle and that car provides feedback such as uh, speed, uh, engine RPM and direction as well. So, the connection between the car and driver are tangible as the car moves down the road. Another example uh, uh, we can take as, a, as the interaction as the typical model uh, uh, of machine components and in the human machine system as like uh, if a student is writing a uh, writing an exam or any term paper uh, in his in uh, on his personal computer. So, the student types in the text using uh, uh, like alphanumerical keyboard and the computer responds by displaying the text on the monitor and identifying a spelling and a grammatical errors that has been done by the student uh, himself. So, that uh, the involvement of the machine is here and uh, the contribution of human and machine is directly uh, coupled. So, the coupling is less direct and the interaction are less tangible uh, in some of the cases also. Like uh, a researcher if he is using internet in order to search for its article uh, on any topic of interest. So, the researcher enters keyword about the topic and search engine looks on the internet to find websites that provide links with the keyboards, keywords. 
the search engine is guided by its own software independent of any further input from the researcher. So, as far as this uh, machine component description is concerned, so the process uh, displays and controls. So, now uh, 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 the things are clear here, now we go to the environmental component. So, the environmental component we can discretize into physical environment and social environment. So, in that uh, physical environment which includes the immediate area of the human uh, machine system separated from the system by a defined boundary in the uh, previous figure. So, the component of the physical environment usually include uh, the location and surroundings like lighting and noise, temperature and humidity. These environmental factors can affect the performance of a human machine system and are of interest to the ergonomist. So, for example, the workspace of a fighter aircraft is its cockpit, which imposes several limitations on the freedom of the movement of the pilot. So, the many control of the aircraft must be located within easy reach of the pilot. So, as far as a social uh, environment is concerned, so your co-workers and colleagues at work, so that is also uh, uh, important immediate supervisors, organizational culture and pace of the work. So, that uh, all the uh, things that are in your surrounding positively or adversely affect uh, your uh, uh, work system. So, as far as uh, overall objective of the ergonomics is concerned, so again I am repeating those points uh, although I have covered in the previous uh, slides like uh, it is just for giving you greater ease of interaction between user and machine. It is also there to avoid errors and mistakes. It is also uh, for uh, providing greater comfort and satisfaction. It is also to reduce stress and fatigue and uh, the objective of ergonomics is also to improve the efficiency and productivity. So, and it is also uh, the objective of ergonomics is also to have safer operation in, uh, in any job profile and as well as to avoid accidents and injuries. So, this is all about human uh, machine and environment uh, components and its relation to the ergonomics. Er ergonomics. And uh, 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 this was all about the human machine uh, uh, system and now uh, before closing this uh, particular lecture, just have a additional thing to enhance your curiosity towards this course such that uh, if you were an engineer in NASA what factors will you consider and stress upon while designing a spacecraft which will be used by astronauts to travel in space. Thank you very much and uh, please read human machine system uh, from recommended reference books for a better understanding of next lecture. Thank you very much.